telling the truth about our lives can help us live with a little more freedom, I guess. And I didn't really learn it until I started going to recovery meetings for my addiction. Oh. So I found out that I was pregnant when I was 26 and I had been lost to addiction for 15 years. At that point, I became bulimic when I was 10 and then that morphed into alcoholism. And I really think, Rachel, that addiction is kind of, for a lot of us, it can be just kind of a hiding place for really sensitive people, right? We just think that there's something weak or broken about us and we feel so much. So we start to numb, right? With whatever it is that we use. Um, but the first, uh, when I found out I was pregnant, my sister came and picked me up off the bathroom floor and took me to my first recovery meeting. And Rachel, I just sat in that circle and listened to people tell the truth about their lives for the first time. I had never heard people really tell the truth because we're all out there trying to act like everything's so perfect and easy, right? Um, and I just remember thinking, oh, this is where they keep the honest people in these basements, in churches. <laughs> this, is, this is amazing. I, I, I really want to get to this because it's so important in our country right now. I want people to understand the difference between bravery, anger, um, and strength. Well, I think it's an interesting process to go through, right? Because I think especially for women, we are very afraid of our own anger and own heartbreak and actually any uncomfortable feelings. I mean, I know so many people who try to avoid heartbreak, but actually what you just said, Rachel, you know, the thing that makes me the most heartbroken, which would be children who don't have a place to be safe, is what led me to my greatest purpose. I think heartbreak often leads us to purpose. Every world changer I know is, is somebody who, it started with a broken heart right? All of us know what breaks our heart, whether it's animals or war or hunger. You go to that place that breaks your heart and you find your purpose in your people. Perfect. Anger can do that. I think anger can do that. I think anger can be a sign that, you know, most women think if I'm angry, it means I need to change myself because we've been taught that anger is bad. But actually anger can sometimes be a signal that there's something outside in the world that we need to change right? Mm. What, what angers us can be a sign of a boundary we need to fix outside of us or an injustice in the world that we need to be a part of. So it's good. Anger is good information. But for me, it's not a good like direction giver because anger usually tells me to like burn it all down or say all the, say the thing or just it, something that gives me immediate gratification, but doesn't, um, isn't healing in any way. So I just think that brave, brave is a little bit wiser than anger, right? It's like, Anger fires you up, but there's always this voice inside of us. And actually, I don't know if it's a voice. It's just a knowing that kind of knows what is the next right thing. That's what's so beautiful about your work. It's about being brave enough to take that next step and not just have the quick fix, but to go for the long game. My first initial reaction is to get mad. I love quick fixes. I have just learned that they don't work in the long run. I think the power is in the rage and the ego, but there's no power there. It's all lower and deeper. And it, it, when we can just take those seconds, then everything we do comes with more healing and power. Can you talk about Get Untamed for everybody? The concept of, of Untamed was just like, there's this point that some of us wake up in our lives and we're like, wait, did I want any of this? Like, did I... Did I make this life for myself or did I just start doing what everybody else wanted me to do? And I ended up in this life, right? And, and that's kind of a beautiful thing because then we start to, to ask ourselves questions, not like what does the world want from me, but what do I really want from my world? And, you know, I think we get to this place where we realize I forgot how to know what I want when I learned how to please, right? When I started just doing what everybody else told me would make me happy. And it's like, you get a menu, right? Like the world gives you a menu and it's like, here's your choices. Here are your possibilities for religion, career, gender, sexuality, whatever it is. And you just pick from the menu and hope for the best. And I have figured out that every part of my life that where in which I feel comfortable in my own skin has been off the menu, right? So it's like, you had how to learn how to cook, baby. You had, had to listen, learn how to Rachel. make your own dish. <laughs>